let your mountain dark and dreary be For when I am far away on the briny ocean tossed Will you ever heave a sigh and a wish for me? Hi, I'm Catherine McKinnon, singer, actress, entertainer. Although I was born in New Brunswick, my association with Farewell to Nova Scotia goes back a long way. I remember bringing the song into a production meeting of Sing Along Jubilee back in 1963 and being told I couldn't sing it because it was a man's song. Well, a couple of weeks later, one of the tunes for the show didn't work out. And the producer said, could you sing that song about Nova Scotia? I did. And the audience reaction was truly astounding. I had to repeat the song, something rarely done because Sing Along Jubilee was a 13-week summer replacement show for Don Messer. It sure brings back a lot of wonderful memories. The sun was setting in the west. The birds were singing on every tree. All nature seemed inclined for a rest, but still. Since my days on Sing Along Jubilee, I have sung Farewell to Nova Scotia thousands of times. It's a song that I still love to sing and I hate to rehearse, and I always include it in my live concerts. It's my signature song and the signature tune for thousands of Maritimers around the world. You see, whenever they get together at a party or a pub, they get a little teary-eyed and sing the song that reminds them of home. The ballad that has become the unofficial anthem of Nova Scotia was found right here in the Papeswick, Chesuncook area of Nova Scotia's eastern shore back in 1933. Then it was called the Nova Scotia Song, and it's believed that it was sung in schools before O Canada. Although it's been incredibly popular, few people know about the woman who found this wonderful song. This is the story of Helen Creighton, the legacy of Helen Creighton, a woman who has influenced Maritimers for generations. Helen Creighton is a petite woman, but she's a giant in the world of folklore, especially in her native Nova Scotia. She spent 60 of her 89 years collecting and recording maritime folk songs and folklore. In fact, it's believed she has amassed the largest English folklore collection in Canada. Dr. Creighton, as she's known by virtue of the numerous honorary degrees she's received, dedicated herself to saving a part of the past for future generations. Tonight, her friends and fans in Halifax are showing her how much they appreciate that. They're here for an evening of music and songs Collected by Dr. Helen Creighton. Oh, what have you in your bag? Oh, what have you in your pack? Right up all this night to the child on the road. I've got a little primer and a little bit of dinner. Cry the pretty little child, only seven years old. The song Clary, Clary Croft is singing, False Night Upon the Road, may be one of the oldest versions of any traditional English or Scottish ballad. the pretty little child, only seven years old. And the first time Helen Creighton heard it was in the early 30s. Her singer then was a wonderful old gentleman by the name of Mr. Ben Henneberry. He lived on Devil's Island at the mouth of the Halifax Harbor. A man like Ben Henneberry living on an island who could sing from dawn to dark and never a piece, as they said, uh, was a big person in the community, very highly respected. <laughs> Like so much of the coastline, Devil's Island is remote and windswept. And when Helen started collecting in 1928, very few people had radios, and television was unheard of. She traveled by car and boat to the fishing villages along the coast. 
and inland to the farms and to the lumber camps and mining communities to find people who entertained themselves by telling ghost stories and singing simple songs to while away the hours. She wanted to save them before the old singers died and took the songs with them to their graves. In the traditional style, the traditional folk singer didn't have to worry about having an instrument. They weren't gifted enough to have a wonderful ensemble like we have here this evening and the beautiful arrangements of, of Scott McMillan. So Scott asked me to present to you a song in the more traditional style. I'm going to have a little bit of help from Scott and Mary. But it's a beautiful, beautiful song from her collection. In fact, it's one of Helen's favorites. And it's called Phoebe. As I walked out one evening fair To view the fields and to take the air I heard a young man sigh and say, I've lost my darling Phoebe. It's very strange how things worked out. Uh, I didn't know anything about folk songs. We never learned them when we went to school. I didn't know what a folk song was. But once I had heard a song, I realized this was something very unusual and treasured. I thought, well, maybe this is what I'm supposed to do. And spend the remainder of my days lamenting for my Phoebe. treasured and preserved includes lullabies and love songs, little songs and children's songs, songs about nature and going to sea and to war. Helen collected them from the Acadians, the Germans, the Scottish, the Irish, the Blacks and the Mi'kmaq Indians. Her family home at Evergreen in Dartmouth offered comfort and security. But that wasn't enough for Helen. She was a pioneer, born with a strong sense of adventure in her blood. After all, I, I drove an ambulance in the first war in Toronto. And I drove a caravan over the dreadful roads of Cape Breton, as they were in those days. And I don't know, I just seemed to be attracted by I can say all had a bit of adventure. Helen found her singers and storytellers in some of the remotest villages in Nova Scotia, Cape Breton, and in parts of New Brunswick and Prince Edward Island. She continued traveling and collecting even when there was no money coming in. She was driven by her love for it and by an uncanny appreciation of the value of her discoveries that might have something to do with the fact that Helen has always believed that she has the gift of foresight. According to folk legend, babies born with a call or a tissue over their faces are born with the ability to see into the future. Well, Helen Creighton was born with a call. I suppose I was in my teens when my mother told me about it. I, I thought that was very silly but she said, I must always keep it. So I always have. And it's here, but I won't show it to you. It's supposed to be bad luck. <laughs> oh, that I'm superstitious. <laughs> Madam, I have come courting. Oh, dear. Not for pleasure, not for sporting. Oh, Dear. You may sit and court the fire, tee diddle ding dum ding dum day. To go to bed is my desire, tee diddle ding dum ding dum day. Helen's research was inspired by the work of Marius Barbeau, the father of Canadian folklore. 
the National Museum of Canada gave Helen her first research contracts. But in those days, even Ottawa wasn't able to provide her with recording equipment. Writer Rosemary Bachman. Uh, she wasn't a musician. She made dots on paper to, to show how the tunes went. Uh, I think that speaks of a remarkable dedication. And your waist is small and slender. <laughs> That was very hard work because I wasn't trained for anything like that. But now there was anybody else that I knew. But I do despise a Quaker teetling dum ding dum day. From the primitive dot method, Helen progressed by using a melodeon, a portable hand pumped organ which she transported by wheelbarrow. And finally, in 1949, the Smithsonian Institution in Washington recognized the value of her work and donated a tape recorder. If I was going to do anything with their songs, they wanted them to be right. And Helen got them right, all 5,000 of them including this beautiful English ballad called All Round My Hat. When I was 14, I sang this in a concert recital. It goes something like this. All around my hat I will wear the green willow All around my hat all Twelve months and a day If anyone to ask me The reason why I wear it I'll tell them it's for my true love That's far, far Helen Creighton received very little public recognition in her early days as a collector. Fortunately, that's changed. She's a member of the Order of Canada and a fellow of the American Folklore Society. She's received six honorary degrees, is the honorary life president of the Canadian Authors Association and the author of more than a dozen books. And almost daily, the accolades continue to arrive as they did, bound in this book of letters. It's a collection of testimonials from members of the International Northeast Folklore Society in Maine. I had no idea the influence of my work had spread so far. Every time these things happen, I think, well, that is the ultimate. Nothing could be more wonderful. I, and I had the concert the other night. And I feel that is the peak. Now, at your maritime Chrysler dealers, the biggest year-end clearance sale in Chrysler history. It's the September Saving Surprise. Millions of dollars in factory to dealer allowances. I can't believe it. We saved a dollar. Wow! Only a dollar. An unbeatable deal. Spectacular clear-out deals, plus option package discounts up to $1,200 on selected vehicles and even more savings with dealer discounts. The September Saving Surprise, the biggest ever. Now at participating maritime Chrysler dealers. And fried pasta and sauce. That go side by side by side. Want a good reason why I choose Tums? I'll give you three. One, Tums is an effective antacid. It goes to work fast. Tums starts to neutralize stomach acid in just seconds, and that's what I take an antacid for. Two, sodium. 
Tums is low in sodium, and that's important to me. Three, calcium. Every Tums tablet provides 200 milligrams of elemental calcium. So when I don't get enough calcium from my diet, I use Tums. Tums, 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 Tums. Hi, I'm Mr. Reliable. Here at Reliable TV, you can rent own anything in the store. Now, from their complete Techniques line, a Techniques audio entertainment system from as low as $74 a month. Don't forget to tell them that monthly payments are lower than ever, and there's no finance company to deal with. I was going to. And that you can rent to own anything in the store. I already told them that. I was just trying to be helpful. Sure. You can have it your way at Reliable TV. And the willow tree shall twine And I wish I was in that young man's arms The one, the love of mine, mine the Helen is a big fan of these people. They're writers from across Canada who are attending a conference in Halifax, and tonight, a concert of Helen's songs. Helen Creighton has done what... Fred Kerner is the past president of the Canadian Authors Association. Folklore is the basis of a culture, and without people like Helen Creighton to bring our past to us, there might be no cultural future. Singer Kay Dimmick Potty is also a music educator. Well, I think she's made us aware of our roots, and we don't really know where we're going unless we, we know where we come from. I think she's giving us our memory. Greg Without Cook is a past the executive the director of the Nova Scotia the Writers the Federation. Writers can't work. The fiction writers can't work. It's the it's the mythology that the oral history has captured of our origins. So not only has Helen Creighton influenced me but hundreds of other people. Unfortunately, the numbers are too great to include everyone. But here are some of the people who know they've been influenced by the lady who gave us farewell to Nova Scotia and thousands more like it. Oh, what have you in your bag? Oh, what have you in your pack? Cried the false knight to the child on the road. Larry Croft, Croft is a writer, musician, and singer. He's a pretty little child, only seven years old. For future generations, the value in the Creighton collection it is, is that it's there, it's ours, and nobody can take that away from us. It's our heritage, just sitting there in a big lump, ready to be explored and discovered by new generations. Scott McMillan is a musician and a ranger. If it wasn't for her going out and meeting the people and all the little harbors and around Nova Scotia, I wouldn't be orchestrating for Symphony Nova Scotia. It's simple as that. John Brown is a playwright. In Dr. Creighton's books, I found a whole education for myself of material that was not taught in the school system, but was still very much a part of our culture and very much a part of who I am and, and who this province is. Over the years, there have been a number of filmmakers who've documented Helen Creighton's life. You're still singing. And many writers, too, like Rosemary Bachman. I call her in my book the first lady of folklore, and that's how I think of her. I think she has preserved so much. She has saved things for us that we would not otherwise have today. Margaret Perrin is a French immersion school music teacher. When I look at the collection of this lady and all the books she wrote, I just found there is no other person in the field of music education has accomplished as much as this great lady. Maria Vink is also a music teacher. Helen Creighton uh, has given us the tools to develop musically and emotionally in the children um, a form of, well, patriotism as you like, or a, a love for their province. Oh yes, and Walter Roast. He's one of your most important singers, is he not? Oh yes, probably in the 30s. I think. 
There's a picture of him and Doreen Sr. noting tune of the kangaroo. Yes. Kangaroo? Yes, can you sing it? <laughs> sure I can sing it. <laughs> <laughs> kangaroo sat on an oak to make him kitty come kai mo. What's the next line? Watching Taylor Mendes count. <laughs> <laughs> you can sing it. <laughs> we'll do a duet and go on the road. <laughs> well, for the last 20 years, Clary Croft has been on the road, nationally and internationally, and on television, stage, film, radio, and on record, singing Helen Creighton's folk songs. I'm interested in my heritage. And that's part of my heritage, the older traditional songs. And the values are still there. I'm still singing about men and women who have fallen in love and gotten back together again. I'm still singing about people's hopes and wishes and fears. They mean the same to me as, as contemporary songs do, because they still have a relevance. That, that's, that's the magic I see in them. I once knew a maiden, a maiden so rare, fell in love with a sailor, a young sailor bold. She courted him daily, by night and by day, till at length this young sailor is so far away. For if I were a blackbird, I'd whistle and sing. I'd Both Clary Croft and Scott McMillan were featured performers at the 1988 Lunenburg Summer Folk Festival. In the top rigging, I'd there build my nest and fly like a seagull to his lily white breast. I would fly like a seagull to his lily white breast. Through his singing, Clary's giving the songs back to the people. Who is a famous Nova Scotian author? And through his work in the public schools, stories. he's spreading the legacy of Helen Creighton. Superstitions. Yes. Helen Creighton. Helen Creighton. Exactly. Today, he's part of a writer's workshop at George Bissett School in Coal Harbor. So Helen Creighton went out into the community, and she said, I understand you remember one or two old songs. And they'd say, yes, I do. And she would collect these songs. And then she would write them down. And do you know what a song that tells a story is called? I know, I know, it's right on the tip of my tongue, I just know it. It's called a ballad. A song that tells a story is called a ballad. Mellow, the moonlight, the shine is beginning. Close by the window, young Eileen is spinning. Then the work I'm doing in the schools is pretty important. And fortunately, and I, I really must give the Department of Education a lot of credit, um, and, and the individual school teachers who work tremendously hard on developing oral history programs and developing awareness of our, of our culture. And through the process of oral transmission, people sang the songs for her, people told the ghost stories to her, talked about the superstitions and their beliefs. <laughs> The sun was setting in the west, the birds were singing on every tree. All nature seemed inclined for rest, but still there was no rest for me. Here comes the part you know. Farewell to Nova Scotia, the sea-bound coast. Let your mountains dark and dreary. It's a magical experience to see that it's not going to die with Helen, and it's not going to die with me, and it's not going to be a dead collection there at the archives. Well, if Clary has anything to do with it, the Creighton collection will be anything but dead. 
He's been on contract to the National Archives, where his job at the Public Archives of Nova Scotia has been to catalog reams and reams of documents and tapes. It was there, Bullington, until her cruel parents gave the squire consent. We have 40 weeks worth of eight-hour days of audio tapes alone. That's just audio tapes. That's not the records or the films or anything. It's an absolutely prodigious amount of work. Prodigious is an understatement. The Creighton Collection includes an estimated 3,000 correspondence files, 20 meters of manuscript material, 5,000 file cards, 3,000 clippings, hundreds of discs and wax cylinders, and over 2,000 still images. I really get cheesed off when um, you get articles published by some folklorists who, stay, who say, well, she did it all wrong. I mean, she, she, she started in the 1920s. She shouldn't have collected this way. She, uh, you know, she should have used a tape recorder earlier. Well, that's very easy to say, but there were no tape recorders here in Nova Scotia when they were saying she should have used a tape recorder. And, and, uh, and when she first started out, she had no academic training in the field of folklore. She set some of the tones for what later became academic styles in folklore. A lot of the material in the collection is closed to the public at the moment because it's still in Dr. Creighton's private collection. But that means Clary's been able to identify the contents with Helen's help. Even in the early stages, you kept meticulous records. You, you had a camera with you, you had recording equipment. You see, very few people had cameras in those days. So getting your picture taken was quite a uh, novelty. And don't tell me men aren't vain. I wouldn't dare tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> the value in the collection yes, is that it is the irreplaceable life's work of a pioneer in her field. You cannot duplicate that. over Seniors Day at Shoppers Drug Mart because all seniors and accompanied family members get a 15% discount on their purchases. And even if you're a little younger, we'll look the other way. There are prizes, free refreshments, in-store specials, fun for everyone. And enter the draw ah! for the Seniors Day Hawaiian Holiday Contest. You could win our grand prize, a 16-day escorted tour for two to beautiful Hawaii. Sushi, anyone? There's nothing more important than the place that you call home. A dream you've always had inside that it can be your very own. Now it's getting closer. You need a guiding hand. You need someone who's a very best. Someone to understand. And Royal the page will stand Royal LePage stands right beside you because it's you that counts the most. Royal LePage. There's a crisp new taste of morning. A taste that everyone's looking for. Look how it's crisp. Big cereal from Kellogg's. The crunchy taste of corn on one side, the crackle of rice on the other. Crisp crossed into one light, great taste. The Kellogg's Crisp Mix is crispy. McMillan has explored the Creighton collection looking for new old songs. Oh, He's a Halifax musician, composer, arranger, and musical director. And in 1987, 
Scott and his friend Clary collaborated on a proposal for a symphony concert of Dr. Creighton's songs. When I first heard the tape of Dearest Mary, I was taken by the emotion of William Riley, the elderly man who sang the tape, who sang the song, um, and the message of it, of, of the slavery, and you could feel it in his voice and the rawness and the emotion of the music, and I really was taken by it, and I wanted to include that right away into the show. Scott had the honor of being the first person to work with this song. It was a responsibility, it was, it was a joy to, just to sit and try to think of how am I going to start this thing and how am I going to structure it and I wanted to feel the blues and how can I relate blues to an orchestra, the orchestras don't play blues. You don't hear them playing raunchy blues in an orchestra. So I had to, you know, find a way to relate it to them and and so it was it was an adventure. very privileged, very lucky and blessed that I could be that one that could bring it from that tape to the concert stage. This folk music isn't going to go away. It's there to stay. You know, there might be the competition for people to listen to other kinds of music will always be there and people will drift and listen to all kinds of things that are culturally quite small. I don't know how to say that, but, but they'll always come back. They'll come back to this because it's, it will stand the test of time. Other artists, too, have come to realize that the legacy of Helen Creighton will stand the test of time. John Brown is one of them. He's a local playwright who based his show, The Collector, on the life and work of Dr. Helen Creighton. She wants her material to be still part of the culture today. I describe it this way in the show. She's given back to the province material that was rightfully theirs in the first place. Move your elbow, Dean. It's got to make room for the biscuits. Jenny, Miss Creighton here is interested in ghost stories. Is that right, dear? That's right. Yeah. Ah, you came to a grand place, you did. It's the Collector was staged twice in the early 80s. The first performance was at Mount St. Vincent University in Halifax when John was a student there. And it was staged again on Citadel Hill for the Friends of the Citadel Society. I wouldn't want nothing to happen to the lad, now would I? We both heard the thing. It was making just enough noise to keep us awake. She has saved a whole wealth of material that has been floating around the province for 200 years. And some people may not view that as being such a great feat, but when you take the regular pop song today, three-minute pop song, which has, what, a life of 15, 20 years, and then it's forgotten about, this material has been floating around the province for 200 years. It's material that grew out of the people themselves. I offered my arm and she did not refuse. Her arm locked in mine made me feel that sweet thrill as we walked off together down Citadel Hill. That's why when I look back at the Creighton material, I say, I'm glad I'm aware of this material 200 years later. Two big feet sticking up out of the ground. They belong to a fella named Blake, who had drowned and was buried with his feet sticking out. <laughs> well, when we realized there was a dead man beside us, we took off out of there in a hurry. You know, I thought a lot about that ghost.
Rosemary Bachman of Lakefield, Ontario, has written and published several articles about Helen Creighton. She met the collector years ago in Newfoundland when Helen was there to open a branch of the Canadian Authors Association. We became very well acquainted as the months and the years rolled on, and I was always uh, very interested in the Bruno's ghosts and in the psychic experiences, and lost no opportunity to talk to her about this kind of thing. She herself is a psychic person, and she once said to me, if someone uh, said they saw an angel, who is to say that they didn't? This is, she would not ridicule anyone. She would uh, accept this as that was part of that person's experience. And I think this has made her a great uh, moment to people who have had a disturbing experience. Rosemary was recently asked by her publisher at Lancelot Press in Nova Scotia to prepare an anthology of Creighton's works. That pleased me very much because I couldn't have a subject that I would have enjoyed writing about more than Dr. Creighton. Not only did Rosemary reread all of Helen's books, but she also spent several days with Clary Croft in the archives. It was a real joy to do this book. Find the photographs, find the music. So hard to, to make it short because I wanted to go on and on and on, but the difficulty was in, in uh, keeping it to the required length. However, I hope I've, I've managed to get a, a selection uh, which will do her, just, do her work justice and perhaps introduce it to, to new uh, readers. That's, that's my ambition anyway. Rosemary's book is in the bookstores now. It's called The Best of Helen Creighton. Some people only imagine what they would do with $25,000. Others go out and get it. They're smart. They play Banco. For just $2, the ticket is yours. Scratch and you could win one of the $25,000 prizes instantly. There are 16 of those, plus thousands of other prizes. Now, make some of those dreams come true. Play Banco. special ingredients. Three for cleansing, two for manageability. VO5 shampoo. Makes my hair do what I want it to. Sugar Twin with real sugar taste. This Sugar Twin is sweetened with 100% NutraSweet. Only two little calories per packet. Real sugar taste from Sugar Twin. Only two calories per packet. This is not a regular commercial about a boring radio station. This is about 680 CFDR, the only station that plays today's top music and the best hits of all time. Nobody gives you more music, more hits, more variety, and fewer commercials. Tune to 680 CFDR and end the boredom in your radio life. You'll love it. 680 CFDR, Nova Scotia's all-hit station. Finally. <sighs> Creighton's best-known song is Farewell to Nova Scotia. There are people like Halifax music teacher Maria Vink who prefer the hills and glens. It's an old tune Helen found, but the lyrics are her own.
knows where this song, song comes from. Uh, Dr. Helen Clayton collected the songs. Right. Maria no, Vink is the music teacher at La Marchant St. Thomas School in Halifax. She's originally from Holland, but for the last 17 years, she's been teaching music in the schools of Nova Scotia. And many of the songs in her repertoire come from the Creighton Collection. Emma, what kind of songs did Helen Creighton collect? Um, love, nature, history, fun and nonsense. Or do you know another fun song? The sauerkraut song has the distinction of being indigenous to the south shore of Nova Scotia. And like most of the songs Helen collected, this one doesn't appear to have roots in any other country. Sometimes the teachers have told me that the children come back from music class and if they have something in social studies or in history they would say oh we learned a song about that and just human relationships you know, like the courting song is, is just wonderful to have a little bit of fun about boys and girls and, and how, how it went in the olden days. This is Margaret Perrin's music class in the French Immersion Program at St. Catherine's School in Halifax. Like her counterpart, Maria Vink, Margaret Perrin has adopted Nova Scotia as her home. And Helen Creighton's Acadian songs have become her teaching tools. I don't teach music just for music. I always feel it's the duty of a music teacher to teach the culture of a nation as well. And by teaching the culture, you'll have to go into the folk songs and the folk materials of the people. And children's songs, games, dances, are the most um, excellent material that you can find to develop a musical mother tongue. And the lullaby is one of the most important things of most of the songs that the Acadians brought over from France. song. It was sung when people got together for a working party to beat or soften newly woven cloth. like Margaret Perrin are waiting anxiously for the release of Helen Creighton's latest book, a collection, until now unpublished, of Acadian folk songs. I can't wait to see the publication come out. In fact, that will add a lot to my repertoire and for the children to learn more about the culture of the Acadians, in a French immersion school especially. Now, at your Maritime Chrysler dealers, the biggest year-end clearance sale in Chrysler history. 
It's the September saving surprise. Millions of dollars in factory to dealer allowances. I can't believe it. We said $1. Wow! Only dollars. An unbeatable deal. Spectacular clear-out deals, plus option package discounts up to $1,200 on selected vehicles and even more savings with dealer discounts. The September saving surprise, the biggest ever, now at participating Maritime Chrysler dealers. Royal LePage stands right beside you because it's you that counts the most. Some people only imagine what they would do with $25,000. Others go out and get it. They're smart. They play Banco. For just $2, the ticket is yours. Scratch and you could win one of the $25,000 prizes instantly. There are 16 of those, plus thousands of other prizes. Now, make some of those dreams come true. Play Banco. The sun was setting in the west. The birds were singing on every tree. Oh, nature Farewell to Nova Scotia has become so popular, it seems to have acquired a status of the unofficial anthem of Nova Scotia. Sing along! Farewell to Nova Scotia, the sea-bound coast. Let your mountains dark and dreary be. For when I am far away on the briny ocean toss, will you ever heave a sigh and the wish for me? I personally think that's, that's one thing that the government should do before Helen goes, is to cap off that by saying, look, this is known through, all throughout the world. And there's nothing wrong with, with having an official song. Good Lord, we have an official flag, we have official flowers, we have everything else. Um, we're known for that song. It's, it's world famous. sort of like a waltzing Matilda. It's given us an identity. It's like putting that little Canadian flag on your lapel pin. It's a song that's done thousands and thousands of times, and I must confess, I'd grown tired of it. I kept hearing it in the taverns and over and over again, but finally I had to do something with it. to be the last number of the show. It had to be the finale. I knew Helen would be listening. I didn't want to throw her any curveballs. I was writing the music for her, and especially that one. I wanted to, I wanted to put my own two cents in there, but still keep the essence of the music. When I was collecting, I always hoped that the musicians would find the material and do wonderful things with it. But I, I didn't foresee what wonderful things they would do. But Scott McMillan had a touch of magic. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you all know the next song, but you don't know Scott McMillan's arrangement. So if you could restrain yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> We'll 
give you a chance afterwards. <laughs> of that song, they want to make it different. They want to say, well, I've, I can't have this old saw sound like Farewell to Nova Scotia. I've got to make it my own. I've got to put my stamp on it. Where I think Scott looked at it and he said, look, this is, this is straight from the heart. It's just pure emotion. And he built on that. had been done and now I was reaping a reward and it was it was just wonderful. Oh I thought that was magnificent. A wonderful ending to the program. The Trinal Farewell to Nova Scotia had been played in the Great Hall of Turner. Well it has, but probably not with the same incredible response it received in the Dalhousie Art Center in Halifax. All of the singers and the performers have really gone all out tonight to pay special tribute to our living folk heritage and to that wonderful lady who has brought us such knowledge of it over the years. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Dr. Helen Creighton. It seems a little awe-inspiring that I've been so fortunate to be the catalyst to whom these things have been saved. Farewell to Nova Scotia, the sea-bound coast. Let your mountains dark and dreary be. For when I am far away on the briny ocean tossed, will you ever heave a sigh and a wish for me? Will you ever heave a sigh and a wish for me? You know, Helen Creighton spent her entire life collecting songs, folk songs, ghost stories, tales of pirates and buried treasure. These were family entertainment of the day, long before radio and television. 
It's ironic that it will be radio and television that will ensure that the legacy of Helen Creighton lives on. I know it will live on in my heart. Now it's your turn. <laughs>